Justin. All right, everybody. Well, welcome back to Rev It Up. And we've got, we're here at uh, Milwaukee here, 64th Annual World of Wheels Tour that we're doing for the Tribute Tour. A um, couple of people I got back with me, pretty cool. Is, uh, Jess is actually back here in Milwaukee with me. She's yeah. been absent for like the last couple of weeks here. And uh, of course, we've got Kristen Knievel is on. We kind of gave you a little surprise. Yes. And I feel like reeling from this. And as everybody knows that I don't prepare for anything. So we were kind of over by the house of Harley last night. I'm talking to Mark, a couple guys. And out of nowhere, we got Jesse James Dupree here from Jackal. And uh, we'll draw some of man. Hey, it's good to see you guys. What a great setup you have. This is really cool. Thanks, man. You, Thanks, you, man. You've kind of taken over the world of wheels. We kind of have it. Yeah. Kind of, you know, I've been part of the show for like 30 years, just bringing stuff here and there. And next thing you know, we got. Last couple of years, we kind of took over doing stuff. It's fun, though. Well, you, it's got, you, you got the, the Knievel set up, and then you got the rest of World of Wills, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what, yeah, we're in, our, we're in our own group, our own demographic over here. You know, everybody's kind of over here. You'll see the Knievel set up and whatever's left in the world. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's like, yeah, we got really got nothing left over here, you know. So we're, job. Like so it. awesome. So you were in town basically for Flat Out Friday and uh, uh, Mama Tried, right? Yeah, that I came in for that and for some meetings with the, the Harley Davidson Motor Company. I've been proud to working with those guys for the last eight years now. We're actually for the last 20 plus, but as far as with the motor company proper, I do a, a series of uh, campaigns called the Rolling USA series. Okay. And uh, so it's like Rolling Daytona, Rolling Laconia, Rolling Sturges, Rolling Milwaukee. Man, you are you really know, involved. And, and, and they're six week campaigns where they give me a, a, a beautiful road glide or a road king motorcycle to give away at the end of the campaign. Nice. Oh, that's really me, cool. I'll, I'll, in Daytona, March the 8th, Friday night, March the 8th, I will give away, I think it's my 18th motorcycle. Come on, and, really? Yeah. And if you'd have told me that when I was a kid that I was going to be working with a motor company and they were going to give me these beautiful motorcycles to give away to people, and it's the greatest feeling in the world handing someone the keys to a brand new motorcycle. That is and, so cool. And, and, and people that bust their knuckles 40, 50 hours a week or more, and it means so much to them. And, and it means so much to me. It's just it's really a cool thing. And I, again, I grew up a fan of the brand and, you know, largely because of, of you know, when I was growing up, Evil Knievel was the reason why you got on a motorcycle. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, hell yeah brother. Yeah. And it's, I guess for them people, uh, um, we've known you as 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 our circuit, you know, as the, the 80s rock star, you know, and what we yeah. have. Not. So I, I got to ask you, could you just do the one verse of Chainsaw real quick? I mean, can you, can you give it? <laughs> yeah, like I can. I got three in my sock as we speak, and the, the detachable ends for all the lady users. So it's, it's, it's all good. But no, it's, it's great to be here with you guys and, and to meet Kristen. I mean, this is great. I've been, again, growing up a, a fan of your grandfather and then and then your father. You know, your dad and I rode together. I, I don't even know how many charity motorcycle rides that he and I did together. Really? And your dad was a nut. I mean, in, case, <laughs> yeah. in, in case you want to, in case if you're wondering if it, if anybody noticed out from outside your family, your dad was a nut. <laughs> I mean, a nut. I've been on a motorcycle with him. I've driven around in his RV with him. He is. We, yeah, we would be doing these charity rides, yeah, and we'd be going, you know, through just different terrains, you know, whether it be in a city or whether it be out. And anything he could whip off the road and jump on that dresser, he would do it. <laughs> Come I mean, on, really? We'd be, yeah, we'd have three hundred people behind us, and here comes Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where the hell did he come from? Where did he go? And he, how did he get airborne? I mean, it's oh like, I, mean I, I mean, I swear that is so true. I mean, That's cool. What we got back one time, I went, God, I'm dizzy. <laughs> he just keep it up with him but anyway but your dad was great and we hung hung out a good bit down in um in daytona yeah and uh because he was down there quite a bit and so anyways but and then now to get to hang with you and and and, and a fellow musician so we gotta yeah we gotta make sure we share stage together sometime. absolutely oh my god yes that'd be amazing you were you were a little shocked when i told you who was here I, you you were still talking to me in the corner and i talked to her i said I said, you remember who I said, you know, Jesse James? She goes, oh, yeah, I'm a huge fan. I said, well, guess what? He's sitting right here. She's like, oh, my God. She goes, you're going to make me cry twice today. Right. So I was like, yeah, so she yeah. was pretty epic. For it, her. it caught me off guard for sure. Well, it, was a a, great, it was a great surprise. But though. what a great setup. Is today the first time you've seen the setup here? Yes. It, it did a great job, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, amazing. Did a real good amazing. Well, yeah. you, you, you're so, I, I'll, I'll tell you how, if I may, I'll tell you a story oh, about Yeah, go ahead. So, yeah. So this is my. No, I'm going to tell you no on my. I'm like, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So this, this is one of my. This is one of my evil Knievel stories. So, um, we jackal. We hit the road, and uh, it was in the mid '90s, late late '90s, probably late '90s, but not probably '98, '99. We went out and we set a Guinness Book World Record, and we did a hundred shows in fifty days. Wow. And, oh uh, wow. and we actually did, we set two Guinness Book World Records. We set one for 21 shows in a 24 hour period. And then we did, and we did a hundred shows in 50 days. Wow. And um, we, I'm never going to complain again about being on the road and just driving. So, so listen, we, we had everything strapped down to the back of a tractor trailer rig. And, um, and 
the, the, the uh, with a big logging tarp over it. So we would pull up in Topeka that morning, that, which is where I saw the Evil Knievel set up the first time yeah, at the museum in Topeka. Right? Yeah, yep, that's where you're telling me about. We'd be Correct. in Topeka in the morning. We'd be in Kansas City that night, in Omaha that next morning, in Lincoln that next day, and we were just zigzagging across the country. And uh, and they would would show up in the morning. They'd flip that logging tarp back, put a little thrust in front of the stage. I'd get out on that, and we would play a full show. And then we'd move on to the next town, and we set this Guinness Book World Record. That's how you do it. So yeah. we were supposed to finish in Texas, but a guy named Bubba the Love Sponge, who's a I've heard, yeah, I've heard, you know, yeah. Bubba, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, and uh, so, Jesse, you never heard of him before. Yeah. Can you explain? Bubba you could explain Bubba to, to yeah. Jesse here. Well, Bubba, who wants to? She's like a radio person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Bubba, Bubba, he still is. And he was. He, he's a big syndicated guy, but he's really con, 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 uh, a controversial. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and he's. Oh yeah. I mean, he's he's crazy, and uh, and, and <laughs> but, but he's really he, he pulls a lot of leverage. But he used to really be on a ton of uh, uh clear channel stations. I guess it was when they were. I heart was called Clear Channel. Oh yeah. And okay. and yeah. so we were finishing up in Dallas, but I get a phone call that from the record company saying Clear Channel is putting their foot down and they insist you do the hundredth show in Tampa with the Bubble the Love Sponge show. And so we had to reroute all of these dates and stuff. And we finished the hundred show in 50 days in Tampa. We get through doing the hundredth show and we, we got off and we were doing a bit of a meet and greet. And there was all these people clammed up around us and, and we're signing stuff. We hear a motorcycle and in the middle of that crowd, they part and here comes evil riding right up to us. Here's the legendary evil kid evil sitting on his motorcycle comes riding up to us. He didn't get off the bike. Yeah. Because he just had hip replacement. Yeah. Oh. So he he just he slid on the bike. Really? Because I swear this is true. He just had a hip replacement surgery. He pulls up in the middle of the crowd, and we all get around and we take a photograph with Evil and that crooked thumb of his up. <laughs> 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 and and I've been so blessed to have my dreams come true. And you know, you you, you grew up with parents and grandparents that were in, you know in, out in the public life and stuff. And I've been so fortunate to tour with. Aerosmith and Kiss and you know just and play with ACDCs yeah. with Brian Johnson just all these things that we've done and my dad grew up on a heart my, you know, my dad my whole life I had a Harley in the garage and stuff and he was proud of me and he'd been around all of it but he just kind of kept an even temp the only time my dad ever showed any like really really genuine excitement when I whoop out that picture of me and Evil Knievel and he's all son now you're doing something but that was uh that was great and um that. yeah so anyway that's, that's a, a great but, story. But, but, yeah that, that was, is a good story yeah. that was a, you know it was such an honor to meet him and we were so beat to death and it was very surreal and I've got that I have a western saloon in my house and I keep all my memorabilia and and right above that door is that picture of of evil and that crooked thumb and us yeah. sitting there just with him and just what I love evil can evil stories. I'd, I'll give you one other quick one. Is I was down, <laughs> they had a, a big stunt show down in Houston, and uh, they were doing Grave Digger and Bigfoot. And in the middle of this all this monster truck race, they were going to announce that Jackal was coming to play the maybe it was San Antonio, the Alamo Dome, I think it was, and we were going to come back and play the Alamo Dome. And um, so I was there to make the announcement and Spanky Spangler and this other guy was going to oh, be yeah, head on course. collision. But the guy that did your grandfather's ramps, do you know okay. what I'm talking about? Uh, I don't know if you know his name or not, but yeah. he was the guy that worked with evil over all the years that was doing the ramps. And he was trying to tell Spanky and them not to do the jump that night because it was, they were hitting two Monte Carlos and it ended up being a, a bad night. There was, ended up being a tragic accident, but, oh he, but that day he was in the back and he was telling them that the ramp, but he, he was nervous because he was having problems with them. And so he and I were sitting in catering and I could tell he had some nervous energy, but he was just telling me all these evil can evil stories. He said that they would take and they would spend all of the time that they needed to do the math, weigh the bike, pull the distance, set the ramp, stack, do all the projections and geometry crazy, and everything. Yeah. They would do all of that and they have everything ready. And they said, evil can evil would walk into the arena hold that old crooked thumb up and look down that ramp and look down his thumb and yeah. he'd, he'd say, raise it three inches. Yeah. You know, and they'd say, well, or lower it two inches or whatever. Yeah. And, say, and they'd say, well, evil, you're not going to make it if we do that. And yeah. said, he said, evil would go, the people don't pay to see me make it. <laughs> oh my God. And, uh, but he, he used to tell me these stories and, and uh, just, I, I, so I eat it up. So it's, it, it's an honor to be here just close to the, this equipment. This is it's, great. It's and, very cool. 
and then, like I said, it, it for us to be on tour with this thing, it's great uh, to go through this stuff. And when we first got going with all this stuff a couple, uh, couple months back, actually now, and we started talking about doing this tour and going to pick the stuff up and talking about the great people. And then, of course, getting to meet Kristen and getting in touch with Robbie stuff. It's just, it's it's an honor. I mean, just having to do his stuff and then, you know, bringing people like you on the air and having stuff like that. It's just so much fun, you know? And Chris, um, Kristen, is, she's still playing. So we're going, like I said, we're going to have to find some time that, oh, yeah. in a slot that. For sure. We share a stage together. That'll be fun. That would be awesome. Yep. We, we, we actually, eat. Sturgis is on our bucket list, so. Yeah, we got Sturgis. We, and, you know, rumor, we're taking the stuff to Sturgis. We just don't know what the exact location, so maybe we'll have to talk. But I'd, I'd love to have you out at the Full Throttle Saloon in Papi Oil Campground. We're the official campground of Harley-Davidson. We have, uh, they put a big half a million dollar building on the property. They do yeah. free Harley tattoos and pinstriping and get your hog pin and, and haircuts. And they have a barber shop there and, and they do all their demo rides. We have an Olympic size swimming pool on the Pappy Hoyle campground. Oh, wow. Um, we have a, a all you can eat breakfast and uh, dinner buffet, the best breakfast in all of Sturgis. And you think, yeah, yeah big deal. Yeah. You think big deal, but let me tell you something. That, that, it's a big deal. You get a couple of days into that, you're going to come and find us. Oh, yeah. It's the best breakfast in Sturgis. And we also we have three racetracks out there. We have a, a, a landing strip where they take people up parachuting. We have, um, and the full throttle saloon sits on 50 of the 600 acres. Just, I mean, it's beyond Thunderdome for people who love badass motorcycles, beautiful women, and a cold belly washer, which happens to be Jesse James Bourbon. Yeah. Yeah. We get, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think the last time I was out there, it had to be over 20 years ago, and I was so impressed about what you guys had established way back when. It, uh, it's with, 600 uh, acres of holy. I mean, it's, it's it, I mean, that's yeah. insane. It's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. 600 acres. Yeah. Wow. I was watching you guys on TV, and I'm like, I got to go out there and check this out. And then I finally went out there, and I was, I was so impressed. I think I was just watching you and Ballard work. And I was just like, it's, it's, it's like epic. Well, we, we've got some really great stuff going on this year and I would love to have you guys come and set up uh you know, we have to figure that out. So we, yeah. you follow up with me later and, and maybe everybody can come and visit with us. And you know, this, it should be mandatory that every asshole in, in Washington, DC and in yeah. and, and these goobers that, that live in these cubicles, you know, in New York and LA, they should all be mandatory made to go to the Black Hills of South Dakota because you're right in the middle of Mount Rushmore, Crazy Horse, which is my favorite place out there. Uh, Deadwood, Devil's Tower, the Badlands, just such a slab of America. And you start thinking about the fiber of the man that had his family in a covered wagon going across that prairie. And the, yeah. the weather's so... Yeah. Jess was just watching old history this morning at the Pony yeah. Express. That's I, what I, yeah, I did, it. yeah. And I second that motion. I 100% agree with you. There, there's a book called uh, Killing Crazy Horse. And uh, it's an amazing book, and it tells the story of our conflicts with the Native Americans, at, which actually started, I guess, the first documentary was down in Alabama. Mm -hmm. But it follows the, the history of these skirmishes and how we would push them to their reservations and then re renege on our deals and stuff. And, yeah. and But it, it culminates in the Black Hills. Um, you know, in, in up in uh, Sturges and Deadwood and and, and Crazy Horse and uh, out at um, out at uh, uh, Custer Park State Park and okay. I mean it's just it's a mandatory go to whether you ride a motorcycle or not you really should come out there and check it but it makes me it, it recenters me because I mean again I, I think of the fiber in those men and it makes me wake up every day and try to aspire to do something. Yeah. It makes it you know you look at the history of what's going on like even this morning we're getting ready for the show and. You know, we get tired, you get exhausted, you're on a show and like that. And she was just watching this morning and they were talking about, you, you know, the story. You told it was a 14 year old boy or whatever who was on. Yeah, the Express. youngest just... Pony Express was an 11 year old and wow. only one died on that whole uh, Pony Express saga. But it was a 14 year old boy and he like fended off like seven Indians. It was crazy. I'm like 14 wow. years old. And then you you look at where we are today in the world of, of going through and people talking and what these kids can't even find themselves at 25 and 30 and look, look at work. Right. I mean, and so it's like, these were 11, 12, we're riding for the Pony Express is going like, and I mean, it's just, we're in a different demographic. We're, ta we're talking about that. And I get off the elevator over at the Hilton hotel and I'm in the middle of a furry convention. <laughs> <laughs> these, all these people are, they're Times have changed from young people. From young people to you haven't lived <laughs> until you see. Convention. We yeah. you haven't lived. You've walked into a seventy-year-old man wearing ears and a tail and furry feet. Oh my god! I saw one yesterday too. I went. I went, I went, I went to sleep. Like, I went to sleep at a bike show and I woke up at a furry <laughs> convention. Yeah, what when you come through? And like I said, I can't even. I think you know, and and we you know just like our our whole display here. You know, we we Americana the whole thing right now. You know, and we want to get the flags out. We want to do whatever and. You know, some people, we've had all great response. I think one person said to me, I only had one person come up and say to me a couple of days ago, do you think you overdid it with the Americana? I said, no, I said, I underdid it. I said, if I said, I said, if I could add, I said, my next show, I said, when I hit Detroit, 
I said that one with the flags up. I said I'll, I'll have forty more flags up there. I said, awesome. I said, I said, I said, American. I said, Evil Can Evil was about as American as you could get, man. I said, as, and I said, it bring. This is what we need to bring the country back together. Stuff like this all over the country. And, and I love to hear the stories. I tell Jess every single time on a Friday or Saturday, some war veteran tells me about what happened and how he knew evil and brings tears to my eyes every single time. Every stop. Yep. Awesome person. And it feels like we're getting farther and farther away from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Time goes on. Yeah. And I mean, people just being, I don't know. They're just the, uh, my dad and grandfather were obviously huge patriots always supporting veterans all of that and i feel like we need more of that right now yes in our life like we just need it this country needs yeah. that i'll leave uh, to i'll leave from here i go back to atlanta for a day and then on tuesday i'll be at uh in kansas city meeting with the, the leadership at the veterans of foreign wars organization yeah i know you do you're huge we, in that we work really close to those guys and we've done stuff with wounded warrior and i mean just a lot of great organizations at the american legion all great organizations and stuff uh, the the vfw i'm so proud of the work that they do in supporting our veterans uh, that have served overseas and and um and you know and you you sometimes you hear people say support our veterans we support our veterans and you and it comes from sometimes a complacent place or it just sounds complacent even if your heart's so it's just you can't stop long enough to and overemphasize it enough that you know that, that they are sons or daughters or brothers and you know and and what really rings for me, is like, you know, you ever, and we, we've done this before. You stop by Walter Reed Hospital and you go in and you visit those guys that are, that are dealing with, you know, the loss of a leg or an arm or in Todd Love's case, uh, you know, two legs and, and an arm. And, uh, you know, and uh, there's, what, uh, you can go on YouTube. There's a really uh, meaningful clip for me that was, that, that was uh, called, you, if you uh, search Todd Love, L O V E, full throttle. Okay. And if you can watch that, and not tear up, then I want to take your pulse. Yeah. Because I mean, I watch it. I, I mean, I was part of it. I lived it. And uh, but it's an amazing night for me, and and just such a uh, a bring it home as far as you know the sacrifices that that, that are made and, and and continue to be made with with the troubles over there. And then right now, it's, although it's not an official war, we got all that stuff in Yemen going on. And I mean, I'm I'm afraid that there's going to be even more casuals and, and I'm, we're not wanting to be down we're, we're not being down we're celebrating these guys yeah we yeah. celebrate the, the, the i mean the families that the, this the families too i mean the families that sacrifice so you know it so yeah celebrating america evil can evil nothing rings more american than evil can evil for sure they were the you know that's evil can evil is the one thing that i can tell you like in this day and time you you compete with these cell phones with these kids having their nose stuck in, in these oh phones. yeah for but sure. i guarantee you if evil can evil was still alive today and doing the stuff he was doing these kids would watch it once on their phone, put it down, and go get a bicycle and start jumping something. That's what I mean. That's what right. got our ass outside. <laughs> I mean, I'm just telling you that that that's something that's palatable and strong enough that you get out outside and you go jump something. And, and I mean, I, I grew up on bicycles and dirt bikes and everything else. And you bet 100 percent jump dirt bikes. Well, but it stopped a little short. Kristen's dad he that dude would jump a sidewalk <laughs> <laughs> some of his greatest stunts were not even on a motorcycle he should have gotten paid for it yeah we, we should have charged extra for that charity yeah, exactly we exactly well, we've got to get you on a plane sir don't we and I appreciate you guys so much and listen everyone out there if you you know if you find out that the evil Knievel exhibit is anywhere near you it's worth the drive i mean when i say anywhere near i'm talking about 8 10 12 hours it's worth the drive oh yeah for sure yeah and who knows you might run into miss Kristen here and uh you could be in part of it so that's great and then i know you guys will be uh heading to vegas pretty soon with what when, when's your target for that we're, we're target is december 2024 to open up the okay. two-story museum yep we'll be we got a we got a lot, a lot of stops here left here you know we'll be in detroit next weekend chicago after that we got a couple of tour stops we'll keep updating the facebook and the, all the schedules on there and We'll see what you and I can work out together. Maybe get together for service. Don't threaten me. Don't threaten me. Oh, it's a good time, man. All right, people. Y'all crank it up. Keep it right here. Spread the word. The most important thing is for you to tell your friends, to tell a friend, and spread the word. This is an incredible podcast, and they got more exciting things to come. So uh, dial right on in. All right. And y'all should use my, you says rev it up. You should use my song, Rev It Up and Go Go, as your theme song. Oh, we yeah, just, we, I heard you have a solo album coming out and a new single breathing, come breathing fire. Yeah, the, the the album's called Breathing Fire. There's the, I wrote about a third of the album with the lead singer of ACDC, Brian Johnson, which is oh my God. Yeah. 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 So I'm out Take my money. Mix. Yeah. So. so you just heard it here live over here. We just got full rights to uh, use Jesse Jam's song in the podcast. Use Rev It Up and Go Go. Go ahead. Oh my God, that is awesome. That is great. well.
again, come on out and see this. We're in the greatest country in the world here. You, United States of America, support your patriots, so support all your veterans, man, and come on out and support everybody and come out and see everybody. And Kristen, how great it is to see you. So it's this is awesome. This has been a, I'm, I'm happy as a clam. Like, uh, I know you're, you're, you're having fun. So we're dialing on in. <laughs> and, one more, I, and, I, and I do want to give one more shout out to a uh, good buddy over here at House of Harley. You make it so happy. Yep. He made it happen the other night. We're on 1029 The Hog the other night, and we started talking, and uh, Great minds think alike, and all of a sudden he's like, "Let me make a phone call." There you go, pow, pow, pow. So I'm just right, everybody, thanks for we get to perform together. That's it's right. coming. All right, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Yeah. Let me hear Christmas. Yeah. Let me hear Christmas say, "Pow, pow, 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 pow." pow. There we go. Pow. Okay. <laughs> Did I do it right? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Come on. All right, just, <laughs> just do a do a pow. Pow. There, there we go. See. Yeah. I gotta get grabbed. Pow. Turn. No. <laughs> I got a frog of a throat. Well, she's possessed. Where did, <laughs> where did that? Well, that's a little different over there. You got. I'm gonna go there. So depends on which personality you get. Just kidding. Uh, have a great day, guys. Rod, <laughs> rod safe. <laughs>